Hello, everyone. I'm Monica Santani, and this is the Fem Word. It feels like I've lost track of what day or time it is during uh, COVID-19 and the pandemic. And, and in order to flatten the curve, it seems that the whole world has come to a standstill with the exception of essential services and healthcare workers. And today I'm actually joined by someone who I also personally see as a hero, Janae Kreitner. She's the founder of Grandma's House of Hope in Orange County, California, where, by the way, there are over 12,000 homeless people just in Orange County. So Grandma's House of Hope started in 2004. People may not know that you know what it feels like to be hungry and to be homeless, having been through it yourself at age 36. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, on January 24th, 1994, I was left at the side of the road right outside of Disneyland with my seven-year-old son, uh, 20 bucks in my pocket. My son and I spent that first night in a phone booth. They still existed then. Um, it was raining. Um, I was desperate. And I looked at my son and I thought, I don't, I don't even know how to put one foot in front of the other right now. And now, since then, you've housed thousands of people and fed millions of people. Can you even believe that this is your life that we're talking about and what you've done with it? It's just I, I scratch my head often just kind of when the numbers come out and I realize, um, you know, what one person huddled in a phone booth could end up doing and you know that it, it has changed my whole perspective you know that's why our, our mission is to empower the invisible you know typically before this COVID came about we'd put three people in a bedroom a bunk bed and a single so we're having to eliminate that third bed in every room and because we're all so closely tied up to each other um, we really felt like we needed to get a isolation quarantine house started what about the actual staff has it been okay in terms of motivating them to come in? I'm very proud of my staff. They really stepped up. I think they got their feet under them. Um, of note, my service coordinators who are, that's our entry level position. Um, and their job is day-to-day -day active service who are our participants and every single one of them showed up to serve. But one thing I found interesting and scary is that the Na National Domestic Abuse Hotline on a regular basis receives about 2,000 calls a day. And of those calls now, there are those that are more directly related to COVID-19. I think the reason we're seeing those calls or people not able to call is one of the things they're, th they're thinking to themselves is, if I leave here, I may be putting my life in danger too. So where do I go? How do I get out? And you know, and I think that women who are often under you know, this kind of abuse by a man are being told things like, if you go out the door, you're going to be arrested. There's a stay at home order. So, um, I mean, I think all of those things play a factor in this, but what we're seeing in terms of an uptick in domestic violence and our biggest concern is around hunger issues around children. We had a 700% increase in requests for our program at Nana's Kids since this started. Um, Just in the last few weeks. Yep. A 700% increase. Yes. How else can we find out about what you're doing and where you need help the most right now? Well, of note, on April 22nd, um, there was already a planned Help Them Home uh, campaign for, uh, it's like a Giving Tuesday, only this is only for homeless shelters. So every year we get to do this and it just happens to fall this month on April 22nd. So on that day, we have a matching grant for $25,000. So every penny that you give on that day will be doubled, um, which is a great way to give on April 22nd. So you can uh, get involved in that by following our social media tags. I'm sure that not only the people that work with you and for you, but even the ones that you're helping are looking to you right now um, for that leadership and you're, you are just doing an incredible job. You've been saving lives for a long time and now more than ever they need you and we thank you for that, Shanae. Thank you. It's very, I'm humbled to go to work every day and honored. And I always say it's not what happens to you in life that defines you, but how you respond to it. And I try to live that every day.